What's going on everybody? Ken in here. Today we've got to do some work. Uh, we've got to make sure we get this little elongated tortoise feeling better. And I'm going to explain to you what happened and I'm going to just go through a little first aid with this tortoise live, man. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to learn something and uh, show you all the importance of paying attention to your animals uh, so that you can make sure and kind of assess their health as you get things going. So this is a little elongated tortoise that I've had for many years, and you guys know where they are at. Uh, what's up, funny cat? Thanks for saying hello, being the first person to say hello. I'm just kind of bringing this in here. Oh, look at this little guy. Now, I found him last week, and uh, let's see if you guys can see. What do you think is wrong with this tortoise? All right, so let's see. Let's have a look. Let's do a little, um, a little uh, once over, okay? And I am gonna turn this guy upside down during segments of this video, and it's gonna be okay. Let's start at the back. Well, we got some ticks that we got to get rid of. Oh, horrible. It's tick season. So I'm just going to get rid of those little nasties. And Sophia is going to be helping out today. There's my buddy Sophia. So this is an elongated tortoise. I'm going to put those right there. But what do you guys think? Let's see. We're looking right here. Nothing wrong with the back. All right. Nothing wrong with the back. But when I noticed something was wrong up here, what do you guys think's wrong? What do you guys think? I don't know. Let's see if anyone can guess, man. No, not the leg, not the leg. Uh, no, this is an elongated tortoise. Um, so basically, I'm uh, going to have to tell you guys, if you look right up there, look at his throat. It's swollen. And to be perfectly honest, it was much more swollen than this about a week ago. And what I think happened is, here's what I think happened, guys. The um, Every once in a while, down here in Florida, we have something called a screw fly. And screw flies will sometimes lay their eggs in a wound. And you'll get these maggots. You'll get these large maggots that kind of bore into the flesh of the infected area. And they kind of live there and they create a, an abscess. And an abscess is basically uh, a hole inside uh, the body wall, uh, the skin, and the rest of the body. And so it creates an abscess, it fills with pus and stuff like that. So uh, basically what I noticed, I, I was walking around their enclosure. Oh, I know, buddy, it's hard to breathe because tortoises move their throats when they breathe and it's when restricted. He can't even pull his head all the way in. So what's going on, what I noticed was this was incredibly swollen. So I immediately pulled him and I basically got him into a betadine solution to soak for a while. And then I started to notice, now guys, there are going to be things that I do here where I'm going to be kind of manipulating the head and I'm going to have to irrigate the uh, wound and do a few things, but I wanted to show you guys this. So I know some of you might think that this is cruel, but I'm actually doing this to help the animal and speed up this animal's recovery. And it's been working, so I'm extremely pleased. So I'm going to put you guys up on the stand here. We're going to just stand you guys up so I can go hands-free and just chat with you guys, all right? So basically, I noticed this guy had this wound, okay? So this wound was really bad, and it was real swollen. He wasn't able to pull his head in at all, and um, man, what a bummer. But the good news is, is I've been getting the swelling to go down, and that's been just basically from first aid. I took tweezers, and I had to dig into the holes in his, in his skin here, and I pulled out just tons and tons of dead uh, necrotic uh, material. And I believe that's called debriding the wound. We got out all the, the bad stuff, all the uh, infection, and then I had to irrigate it. And uh, I'm gonna stop for a second and say, happy birthday to YT Wonky, okay? But then I'm gonna get back to work because we're working with a live animal here. And I uh, can't do many shout outs while I'm working on the live animal. But uh, anyhow, guys, what I had to do was clean this area out and you're about to see, you could see actually some bubbles. Um, I, I, I kind of preemptively cleaned this out earlier uh, so that I didn't have to do it on the video, but you can see that there's still some fluid left in there from when we were, uh, when we were basically doing the uh, cleaning earlier. So I got all the old medicine out and we're gonna go ahead, irrigate this with betadine and then we're gonna go ahead and um, you know, we're going to go ahead and uh, get it all dressed up. And then I'll be able to shout out and hang out with you guys. So just bear with me because this is what we're going to do. You see, I have to pull his head out and you want to just gently hold it. I'm holding it behind 
the neck, all right, right behind the head, the skull bone. So this is just keeping him from pulling in, okay? And I do appreciate the donation. I'll get to shouting you out in a little bit. But right now, I've got a mixture of betadine right here, okay? I've, I've kind of put water into it, so I've made the mixture a little bit more um, not as potent. It's not straight betadine. And I got this really cool syringe. You see the syringe? It's kind of like an irrigation syringe. So I learned all this from my friends at Bush Wildlife and the different vets that I've been to. Um, this kind of thing I feel comfortable doing myself because it's a wound. Um, if, it were, if I were not comfortable or if you're not comfortable, then you must consult a vet. And don't try to do this without any kind of expertise. This has been many years I've been actually able to work on these animals. All right. So I'm going to go and put them down just right like this and we're going to irrigate. All right. He's not happy and it doesn't feel good. But you can see right there, see, I'm just, you see how it's just kind of perforated? So there's holes in his throat, but this is not going into his body, into his throat, uh, into like his throat proper. It's still what we would call a superficial wound that's on the surface. So, but it's created an abscess and you can see how far in this syringe goes. So we've just cleaned it out. We've irrigated it. All right. And again, oop, let me go back here. We've really irrigated this out. So I want to just hold them out. Now I know you guys, some of you might think I'm hurting him and this definitely doesn't feel good, but this is for his own good. So now what I need to do is I'm going to take my Silvadine cream. All right. And what I've done is I put it in this syringe. So this is a new syringe. Hold on, buddy. I want to just get him. He's pulling in really strongly. I don't know if you guys can see this. But I'm going to take this and place it over that hole, and we're going to pump it into the wound. Ah, oh, and now that is packed with silvadine. But you can see, see how the silvadine has come out in different areas? Okay? Um, it's come out. That shows you that this wound had different openings, and that's what leads me to think that this was a fly strike, that this was some kind of uh, maggot attack, and the bugs went through the metamorphosis and left, but left him with a necrotic throat that was infected and swollen, and he was unable to pull his neck in. Now, because I've been doing this every day and cleaning him, what's happened now is he's able to start to pull his head in more and more, and the skin will regain some of its elasticity, uh, which is very important, obviously, if you're a tortoise, because you want to be able to pull your head in. So there it is. And, you know, he's, he's got pressure on his eyes, so his eyes bulge out a little. And like I said, it's a little difficult for him to breathe because, as we know, tortoises need to move their necks when they breathe. Uh, and you see him pulling out here. Uh, I'm not seeing any kind of secondary infection that's gone systematic, so I haven't had to throw any um, injectionables into him. But you can really see how his throat hangs down there. And we're just trying to keep that infection um, under control. And uh, that's what I use, sil silver sulfidine, guys. That's that silver, silver sulfidine cream, which is the uh, good stuff. It's a very, very good um, antibacterial. Uh, I love it. And it's, been, it's just done wonders for me with these animals in the past. They use it on burn victims, um, you know, and it's just because it's really good. Uh, so I'm really excited. And um, it is a good thing that, you know, I was able to notice this. Oh, and he's throwing up a little bit. That's all right. He's just been upside down. So it's no big deal. You want to make sure you get them right side up. And he's been eating, which is another good sign. So I'm going to put him down there. But you guys, uh, the key is when you have animals is to really pay attention to those animals and make sure that you're, you know, it can be difficult to do with such a large collection. Uh, Jan Shell, yes, he does eat. He does eat fine. It's not affecting his esophagus. But that swelling is affecting his ability um, to breathe while his head is, is retracted. Um, so that's why he's gasping for air um, when I was holding his neck uh, because it's, it's just not able to really um, move, you know. Uh, Eric Becker, thank you. And I want to go back to my friend um, B. Hutch, 216. So uh, he feels bad for the little guy. Uh, things are out of my control. Um, keep up the great work. We'll be in my well-deserved 500,000 subs soon. Thank you guys so much for making that a reality. Super excited that, for that. Uh, more excited that I'm able to share my lessons with you guys, you know, to share a little bit of the knowledge that I have attained over the years of doing this 
And the cool thing is, guys, I'm still learning. Um, so no one is perfect. Uh, animals are going to get sick. I've mentioned it before in videos. You know, I have close to 200 uh, reptiles here. And um, when you have that many animals, you're going to have a, a certain percentage of them that are going to get sick. Now, I've been doing well for a very long time. Um, but now I'm starting to learn, uh, you know, I'm just starting to see because we've had some incredibly wet weather, um, you know, and so for some of my leopard tortoises and sulcatas, that's not the best kind of weather. So I do have an update on one of my sulcatas. If you watch Saturday's video, um, it deals with, uh, how to tell, you know, is it normal if a tortoise is moving or not moving? And I, I go into great detail. Um, so there you go. Um, Anyhow, guys, um, you know, it's just uh, just really, really cool. So uh, I'm reading Gail Osler's uh, comment. Thank you very much, Gail. Um, it's, uh, I'm always appreciative. I, you know, obviously I don't have lidocaine that I could numb the area, but I didn't have to because there is, as you mentioned in your comment, uh, there is no opening into his throat cavity, okay? Uh, but thank you, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm not squeamish, which I think is good. Um, so I put that sylvodyne all over. It creates a buffer between the outside world and his body. And uh, it's really good stuff, as some of you may know. Um, this is something that I keep on hand here. And if you have tortoises, it's something I would look into getting from your veterinarian. Um, just for superficial wounds, uh, it is just a lifesaver because we don't want a secondary infection to take in, man. So um, it's very, very cool. Uh, and thank you, Gail. I appreciate that. I get a little nervous. Sometimes, you know, when you share things like this online, I think some people, um, you know, misunderstand it, think that I'm hurting the animal, but this is purely to make sure this animal survives. And sometimes it's important um, or sometimes it's necessary that they endure a little uh, discomfort. Now, if there was something really, really bad, I'd go to a vet. In fact, I was at the vets today with another one of my animals. Um, it was Lumpy the Sulcata. You guys will find out what happened with him, uh, what's going on with him. It's going to be an ongoing saga. I'm going to let you guys know what's doing. Uh, that video comes out Saturday during an Ask Camp Kennan. Um, but I just really wanted to, you know, show you guys what's going on uh, and what's happening. And we got another shout out for Brian Hutch. Just found a seven foot alligator in a creek up in Cleveland, Ohio, and they killed it because it was near school instead of relocating. It's so sad. You know, guys, that's why I always talk about you know, with sulcatas and some of these large tortoises and gators and boas and pythons, you really got to know and have the space for these animals uh, because it's unfortunate that someone would dump a beautiful animal like a gator uh, who they just, you know, it's almost a, a blessing that they killed it quick because if no one found that gator, it would have just slowly froze to death once the fall came around. So it's so important, guys, that we make sure that when we get animals, we, we kind of temper our our desires okay oh i want this i have to have it you know what guys slow your roll we've all been there myself included as a young person oh my god i gotta have this i want this and i've just learned that it's not the best for the animal until you can provide you know space and the know-how to really properly care for these animals and deal with the unfortunate events that happen like you know them getting sick or getting a wound it is what happens and guys every single day in nature animals die and they die horrible deaths if this animal didn't have me around and got sick it most likely would have died due to an infection i'm going to put him back in and we can go ahead and we can chat a little bit more normally um there he is he's been staying in here on some newspaper i've been feeding him in there and giving him a nice little uh soak every couple days so he's doing well uh he's eating it's really going well so um there you go there's that uh, let's go ahead. The rain has kind of chilled out a little bit. How you guys doing? The rain is chilling out. It's a little bit of a drizzle. Um, so we're going to walk around and I'll show you guys what else is happening here at Camp Cannon. Um, there's some things I can't show you because I want the videos to come out. What's this? Look at this. That's no bueno, man. The wind must have blown that. I'm going to have to put that away. Let me just put that over. Kate got a new grill for her birthday. She's been cooking up some good food. It's awesome. But, um, okay, what have I done lately? I put irrigation lines in, and we got an irrigation line that runs all the way, there it is. I didn't hide it there, but it, it's hidden everywhere else. So it goes in, goes all the way, all the way over here. So it fills up 
the water in this guy's enclosure, in the rhino iguana's enclosure, and there it is. It, the, let's see if I can open it. I don't want to freak them out. You know how temperamental those lunatics are. But here is their enclosure. So I just went to Home Depot. You can get these at Home Depot. Irrigation lines, they make adapters that you can just put them right onto your um, hose bib on the side of your house. And then I run it, and it fills up this. It fills up another enclosure that I'm not going to show you because it's a surprise. And it fills up this Olcotta, um water bowl. And the reason that I had to redo this Olcotta water bowl is because when we were building this enclosure, this pond, um, it was ripped up. So it comes from there, goes through here, wraps all the way around to here, goes over there. Quick look at the new enclosure that I'm not showing you. Uh, but look at how amazing the plants are doing. Um, I want to shout out, um, who am I shouting out here? Who's this gent nice person? Uh, thank you so much, S-Y-F-F-E-S-Y, -F -F -E Felix. Thank you so much for your donation. I do appreciate that, guys. But here is the biofilter, the wetland filter from Aquascape, and it is amazing. Um, it has just been doing its job. What can I say? It is really, really working well. Um, also, something that I just noticed in the last few weeks, I don't know if you guys appreciate this as much as I do. I don't know what kind of plant this is. Maybe someone else from Florida knows, but I love this little plant just these plants are taking root and just growing in the coolest of places and they really break up these awesome rocks you know they're really weathering the rocks are getting a mold on them and getting weathered and look at how big the plants are getting it's really really cool uh cashy kitty Cantrell, so glad you were able to help them Thank you for educating everyone. Love the videos as always. Uh, we keep silver solvodyne cream on hand for injuries in our first aid kit. Can't wait for the new baby tortoises. All right, very cool. Um, yeah, that stuff is great, isn't it, guys? Uh, get silver solvodyne cream. You have to get it through your veterinarian. It's raining real good here, guys. But there's the pond and uh, there are turtle heads right there. <laughs> they are so funny. Uh, Gemini exotics, they look like Stella Ganelia. Okay. Um, I want to show you a little, I was digging around in my, in my garage and I found some old tiki heads, so I stuck them up. Check it out. I'm really happy to have my tikis out and about. So this is, uh, we got to name this guy. He's the uh, watcher of the turtles. So he's like my uh, tiki, you know, talisman. And uh, it's a pretty cool piece of art. I believe this came from my friend Lonnie McCaskill. I am not sure, but I think it's something, I think it was African. I don't know. Uh, but anyhow. Here's the gator pond. We'll walk over here. Let's see. Um, let's see. Let's see. Uh, love the natural look, and I believe the animals do better in natural environments. Lacey uh, Charbonneau. Benou? Benou? I believe it's Benou. Thank you, Lacey. Uh, so check it out, everyone. There it is. I did some smoothing out in that, in that area and over there, um, but it's been so hot that I only work like maybe for like 45 minutes, and then I'm like, all right. I'm just doing it section by section. But uh, the ponds are full, which is really, really cool. I got to get a machine to cut this, remove some of these uh, logs or telephone pole. I'm going to line the telephone pole up in the back uh, about a few feet away from the bank to create a barrier that the gators can't dig through. And then we'll have our fence through there. Uh, I want to also say uh, hello to Jason Lackner. Um, oh, man, I don't sell the cactus pads just on their own, buddy. Um, uh, gosh, um, you know, when you order a tortoise, I, I will sometimes put them in if I have them on hand. Um, but you can also try, go ahead and try a, um, like a Latin supermarket, okay? Because they may actually keep some on hand, in which case you'll be able to, um, you'll be able to grow them. See, this is blocking. Let's move that. It's blocking our, our flow. There we go. And so then that goes and flows into the main pond. Okay, let's go back under some cover. Let's get in some cover. I can answer some more questions, folks. All right, so that's what's everyone, that's kind of what's been going on here with the animals. Oh, there you go. Um, Amy Bruner found some cactus pads on Amazon. There you go. Anything on Amazon. Yeah, I believe they're called nopales. So go ahead and search that out on Amazon. Very cool. Here we go. So the plants are doing well. I'm really excited about all these little plants. Um, and the rain's been good for at least the plants because, man, look at them grow. I mean, they are growing. Uh, when uh, The gators may be a while before I get them, but I will have some crocodilians here soon. And I will absolutely post 
for you guys. You know I like to keep you abreast of what's going on. Let's go see the leopards because guys, this wet weather has been murder on my leopard tortoises. It's just been hot, wet, and humid. So I, after I get off, the, get off with you guys, I'm probably gonna start pulling all these little leopards uh, into the barn. All right, they could take some rain, but I don't like to let them just get rained on all day long. So there you go. And that rain's really coming down now, my goodness. Should we uh, risk it and see if we could see Slinky today? Let's go visit Slinky, everybody. Oh, I also wanna let you know, um, just FYI, if you guys have the room and you're looking for a sulcata tortoise, I am still offering these baby sulcatas. I'm offering these guys up uh, at $50 for baby sulcatas plus the shipping. Email me at campcannon at gmail.com. Here they are, little guys like this. All right, so there they are, a little tortoise diet, and we got some cactus in there, but we have beautiful light-colored tortoises. Uh, they're $50. So I'm just letting you guys know before I forget, okay? Just email me at campcannon at gmail.com. I'm moving this out of the rain. I don't want the rain to get on the little guys. And then we've got the blue iguanas are doing well. Let me see if I could focus in on the blueies. There they are. He's shedding up on female. I'm really excited. Uh, I saw a question I'm going to answer. Uh, Goober maximized. Hey, I love your stuff. Any particular type of wood that may be harmful to tortoise uh, that I wouldn't use for their enclosure? Uh, you know what? I've not run into any problems like that. Uh, I'm looking for Leon, guys. I think he's in his cork home. I don't know. I don't see Leon, man. He's getting big and green. Oh, there he is. Look, everybody. There's Leon. He's backlit. Come on, Leon. Move. Move for everybody. There he is. Look at Leon. I love that lizard. He's a banana pectinata. There he is. Say hello to everyone, Leon. <clears throat> so, kind of do well in Florida, but on rainy days like this, I just wouldn't leave them out in the rain uh, for too long. All right? So, there you get. Um, usually two weeks after the first breeding, you'll get eggs. If they're fertile, they'll lay eggs about two weeks after they breed. Uh, breeding usually starts up in September. I start getting eggs end of October, November, but really start cooking January through March with the eggs. So there you go. Uh, favorite food for sulcatas are green leafy vegetables, grasses, hibiscus flowers, Missouri tortoise diet, the low starch tortoise diet, yellow squash, zucchini, cucumber is good to add to the diet for water. Watermelon's good to get them uh, water. Look at this, he's just staring at us. He's just staring at us, there he is. There's Leon, everyone. So that's pretty cool. It is raining something fierce now. Look at this rain we've been dealing with. Every single afternoon, it has been just bam. What's up, Patient Smith? What's going on? Uh, Jose, I'm not gonna go to Daytona this year. There's Slinky, guys. There's the Slinkster, hiding out. Let's say hello real quick before, look at how much rain. Look at this water. Look at this, it's, it's a nightmare. This is the problem. It's the problem. Part of me doesn't like keeping some of these different, like leopard tortoise I know don't like this water. Look at Slinks though, he don't mind it. Woohoo! The radiation tortoises are good. They should be breathing fire really soon, Reptile King Jack. I should have them breathing, uh, breathing a atomic plasma breath uh, in no time, dude. They're doing good, and they've been reproducing, so that's nice. So there you go. Uh, man, uh, Lauren Morris, my friend, is saying he wants an Aldabra and keep him inside lifelong. I know he doesn't understand that they start small and they get huge. How can I dissuade him? Show him some of my videos. Show him the adults and show him it would be giving this beautiful, majestic animal. It would be doing that animal a disservice. Uh, just basically use common sense. Um, it would be more of a hassle. It's, it's a shame. It's just not an animal that does well indoors and they grow all funky. Not impossible, but you've got to have a lot of moolah and a lot of space to make those animals' lives worthwhile. I just never would want to keep a beautiful animal like that indoors, um, which is why I moved to Florida, man. I just up and left. I'm like, hey, I hate winter. I love reptiles. I live in Florida. All right. There you go. Let's see. That's so cool, man. Uh, I'm just trying to find some more little photos, but I think that's about it. Look at Slinky getting all up close and personal with you guys. He's giving you guys lizard kisses. I hope you enjoy this. 
But you know what? That rain's getting real good, so I'm going to go and back on out. Say goodbye to Slinky, everyone. There he is, signing off. And then uh, we got to lock the bottom, lock the middle, and we lock the top. We got our, oh, we got Snake Shed there, Colin and uh, his girlfriend. The carpet pythons are in there. The rhino iggies are uh, hiding out. They're smart. They're in their box today. Let's see who's over here. Let's see if Marty the Mertens is around as we wander back over towards the patio. He was out earlier, um, but I don't think he's out and about right now. So I'm not seeing him. Oh, look, he's in the water, everybody. Let's see. I'll show you guys. I'm going to open this and we'll show you what a Mertens looks like while it's sleeping in the water. Oop. I like putting three latches on everything. All right, look at that. Can you guys see right there? Hey, you know what, guys? I'm gonna try something. Hang on tight. Oh, orientation lock. Hold on, everybody. Let's see if this works. Hold on. Ah, I can't with the orientation lock. Hold on. How's that for underwater, huh? A little underwater photography. I don't want to risk it too long because I did screw up an iPhone doing that. But uh, supposedly it's water resistant. We shall see. Don't believe them. All right, so there was a little quick underwater shot of the Mertens water monitor having a bit of a hangout. And uh, you know what, folks? Let's get out and finish up this live. All right, we're wandering, we're wandering. Hey, look, it's Willy Wonky. Hey, Willy Wonky, what are you doing out? Oh my gosh. All right, well, we're gonna finish up this video, everybody. I just, uh, ooh, oh boy, no bueno, hold on. Hey, that's better than that, right? Uh, anyhow, uh, thank you all for joining me on today's live. I hope we learned something about these guys. Ward Chapman 95, would you do a swimming with manatees? Sure, I've done it before. Uh, would love to do another one um, and film it. So uh, very cool. I uh, just want to say thanks, everybody. Again, uh, what we learned today uh, to reinforce it is if it's a superficial wound and you feel comfortable doing it, in other words, the wound doesn't really need a stitch, um, definitely look into sil uh, silver sulfidine cream uh, or sulfidine cream. Uh, it's really, really good if you feel confident enough to debride the wound and do that kind of stuff. If something is frightening you and you're not sure, always consult a veterinarian. Uh, it's the most responsible thing you can do. We don't want to cause more injury to an animal uh, in our attempts to help it. Um, and I, like I said, I was at the vets today with one of my tortoises that we will talk about that on Saturday. Um, again, thank you guys so much. Uh, do me a favor, hit your notifications so that people, that you all out there, know when the videos show up. Uh, definitely hit that notification, like, and subscribe. And if you really like what we're doing at the camp and you find value into what we put out there onto the uh, YouTubes, then uh, go ahead and follow along on patreon.com slash Camp Kennan, where you guys can see content you can't see anywhere else. We do live chats there as well uh, in a more intimate set, uh, setting. And uh, there's some content that, that I think you guys will dig there as well. Thank you all so much. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this live. Uh, before I leave, I just want to say, uh, what's up, Axel and Carl's Canal? Love you, videos, KK. Thanks for showing the support. Uh, how can you get a sulcata tortoise, Kevin Campos? Email me at campkennan at gmail.com. In the subject, put sulcata tortoise. I'll send you the info on how you guys can get it. Uh, hope my tortoise gets better. Ward Chapman 95, thank you. And the underwater shot was cool. I thought it was pretty neat. I mean, not a lot of live underwater footage on there, uh, out there on YouTube. Uh, all right, everyone, thank you, thank you, thank you. We're almost to 500,000 subscribers. This is amazing. Thank you, guys. You rule. I think we have a really dedicated group of people that enjoy the videos. And we're going to keep on producing them for you. So thank you, and I'll be seeing you all soon. I'm going to leave you right now with a little shot of this guy. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, Crystal Miracle, her daughter, turned 13 today. Well, happy birthday there, little Miss Miracle. I'm sure your mom believes it was a miracle having you. And uh, good job turning 13. You're now a teenager. Stay on the straight and narrow. This guy's relaxing. So, guys, thanks so much for joining us. Everyone say happy birthday. Our name is Holland. So happy birthday, Holland. And uh, shout her out today, everybody. I'm signing off. We'll see you soon. And I'll see you all Saturday for an Ask Camp Kennan. Later.